Greetings, I'm Vok. Because I have about a million videos uh, on the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt and both of the expansions, there is a slight chance that you might have seen something from me. If you stumbled upon this video by pure accident, well, greetings from Bulgaria. I would like to show you my favorite Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Blood and Wine New Game Plus build. First, of course, I think it's only natural that we would begin with the inventory. A very quick observation of my three favorite decoctions, Ekinda, Ekimara, and Waterhug. Why? Because they benefit uh, vitality, they give vitality boosts, and you will see later on why vitality boost is so actually very important for me. First, because when I get hit, I can very quick and easily recover, but also because when vitality is at maximum 100%, it actually adds to my damage. I should mention Succubus and Katikan. Of course, there are others that you might or I actually do use from time to time. Going with the uh, weapons left side of the build, Grandmaster Legendary Ursin Steel the Bear Sword. I'm using pretty much the whole Bear School build um, armor set without the Silver Sword, which is Iron Dite. But let's go in order. On the Grandmaster Legendary Ursin Steel, I've got the Preservation, Armorous Stable, and Grand Stone bonuses never expire. Now, this is pretty much because I'm lazy. Uh, you could get something more beneficial for specific fights, but then again, you would be forced to go back to the Armorer's Table and the Grindstone, the closest one probably to your own vineyard, because Geralt gets a home, if you don't know, in Blood and Wine, so you can actually kind of quick and easy teleport and get there to upgrade your weapon and um, armor. However, I prefer to have those all the time, that's why I've decided it's worth spending the uh, runestone slot on, this, on the uh, steel sword. This is by far the best sword, even though it shares exactly the same name for the normal game and for new game plus, I've, I just went to uh, Tucson and I picked up the quest and I finished it, by the way, as you can see, the quest is uh, for level 90-ish and the item, the Oven Sword Iron Diet, is as well for level 90. So I highly suggest you pick it up as soon as you can so you have plenty of time and room to level it up and keep expanding it. The rune that I've uh, installed or integrated into the Iron Diet is Invigoration. When at maximum vitality, any vitality regeneration turns into added damage up to 50% bonus on your next strike. This is why my three favorite decoctions, all of them involve um, boosting vitality regeneration. It doesn't really matter which crossbow you would be using, as you can see I'm opting for the feline crossbow because it gives just a slight better damage boost compared to the bear school. Uh, down below in the left bottom corner we've got the superior black blood which is awesome against vampires, not that they are really challenging. The, the superior black blood is really good for pretty much every special creature in uh, the blood and wine expansion and most of all throughout the story because spoiler alert you are going to encounter tons of vampires for my hp regeneration i've always been using superior swallow and i always like to have something simple because water is cheap enough and i have a video of where you can find cheap water with uh, nearly unlimited supplies um, check out that video by the way if you're interested for some merchants and what they sell and the last uh, potion that I have is Superior Tony All. Why Superior? Because it doesn't um, tick down. The effect duration is permanent during night. And as you can see, it increases with 10% the stamina regeneration in combat, which is really cool for me. On the right side, with the armors, we've got the Levity. All equipped armor items are treated as light armor. This is really important because I'm going to show you the skill points uh, distribution uh, later on. And you will see why I'm turning this heavy armor set into light. Yes, obviously now here the wolf, the cat um, armor sets, the witcher armor sets would probably be more beneficial. But I'm a huge fan specifically of the Grandmaster Legendary Bear set because it looks awesome. And I just like the damn playstyle, plus I've got over 700 hours of gameplay and I dare say I'm more than experienced enough so I can afford kind of a drawback using non-perfect uh, armor set for this specific build. The next piece is Grandmaster Legendary Ursin Gauntlets. You can see that I've installed or implemented uh, Yarden Sign Intensity and Q and Sign Intensity. 
Uh, there is nothing on the chest piece because the rune stone actually takes all three slots for mods. Down into the pants, we've got <laughs> Kuen signed, and uh, again, Kuen signed, these are the plus 10%, the best option uh, available uh, glyphs, which are greater glyphs. And for the for the boots, I've got a Yarden sign and an Axi sign. These are more or less optional for you guys. You might want to opt for Kuen or Kuen or maybe Yarden and Kuen or just Yarden, depending on what your personal playstyle is. Why I've decided to go for Axi here, I cannot really tell you. Probably I should have gone for either Kuen or Yarden. None of the uh, rest of the gear really matters because you don't really have much of a choice. I'm sticking to the Fiend trophy because it looks fantastic hanging on the left side of Roach and uh, makes the three of us, me, her and the head of the beast look really cool. Now, quick glance at the stats. This is with, as you can see, Pretty much everything activated, with with an exception of uh, probably I could use the superior towny oil and show you once again these stats. Now this is out of combat. When you start combat, especially when you start as if you're fighting special creatures, if you start uh, upgrading the sword and stack up the sword, in case you haven't noticed, the special ability of that sword is not just that it levels with you, but each blow generates charges which increases sword damage by 10%. Charges are lost over time or when receiving damage. A fully charged iron diet always deals critical hit damage. My god, the hits with a fully charged sword are capable of nearly two shotting or three shotting, shotting pretty much all of the bosses um, that the expansion has to offer. Let's jump into the fun part and take a look at what skill points distribution I've opted for and what exactly am I doing here. For the combat, I do have the muscle memory, strength training, precise blows, crushing blows, rend, center armor and razor focus. Why these? That's just personal um, option. You might actually want to go for crippling strikes or perhaps you might want to go for flood of anger. That's more or less personal decision depending on your experience with the game. If you're up to this point where you're reaching blood and wine in new game plus for uh, death march. Did I forget to mention that is obviously a build for death march. You have more than enough experience so one ability here or there changed or swap isn't really going to, match, to make much of a difference. For the signs, as you can see, I'm only going for delusion because it's fantastic to have that in um, conversations and because it's actually really useful. And I do have Exploding Shield because I tend to use Kuen quite a lot. It's pretty much my go-to ability uh, every time I start combat. For the alchemy, because this is a really heavy alchemy build, how else are you supposed to be able to do this crazy amount of damage? Alchemy combi combined with combat is by far the most damaging possible combination in the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Overpowered, I should say. Now, in terms of ability that I've picked, uh, Heightened Tolerance, Poisoned Blades, Acquired Tolerance, Protective Coating, Tissue Transmutation, as you can see, those are uh, sitting right here, uh, Synergy, Hunter Instinct, and the best of all, Killing Spree. Moving on to the general section, I do have a Katsuku technique. Each piece of light armor increases critical hit chance damage. Excuse me, it increases critical hit damage, not the chance, by 25% and the fast attack damage by 5%. This is my friends why I'm using the um, rune stone to transfer the heavy set that I'm using the bear school gear into light so I can use the Katsuku technique. If you want to save a skill point or a skill slot, I should say, you could go for another armor set. I just love the bear school. And uh, the, the last one here is rage management. Why rage management? If your current stamina level is too low, signs can be cast using adrenaline points. I do tend to build adrenaline points quite quick, so most of the time, actually, I'm using my signs um, to spend adrenaline points because I almost never wait for the stamina to be fully recharged so I can do whatever I want to or with the monster that I'm fighting. 
On the right side, I think it's pretty much self-explanatory. Buff up as many of the red um, slots as you can. And I don't think there is even uh, need to mention that for an alchemy build, you do need Euphoria. Each point of toxicity increases damage dealt by swords and sign intensity by 0.75% up to a maximum of nearly 200%. Well, I can show you right here that currently Euphoria is boosting my Geralt for 171%. Yes, it could go higher, but question is, do you want it to go higher and what are you willing to sacrifice? I personally don't want to sacrifice my appearance, so that's why I'm opting for this um, for this one. And yes, stack as many red skills to, to get buffed by the uh, greater red mutagen. Always go for the best and highest uh, tier of the mutagens and try to do your best. The red, the red mutagens are far greater in value for this build specifically than any other mutagen that you might have or want to have specifically the uh, blue and green because green doesn't really give you much vitality who cares about vitality you shouldn't allow actual enemies to hit you plus the bonus is not really that great and uh, the blue increases science this build is about hitting uh, like a truck with very strong sword attacks so it doesn't really depend that much on uh, signs overall. I do use my signs, as I told you, to, to make whites appear, for example, with Yarden, or to shield myself in case I screw up and make a mistake and allow something to hit me. Because against the more serious boss encounters, actually allowing them to hit you might cost you nearly your life. For example, the uh, final boss fight of Hearts of Stone, the final boss, boss fight of uh, blood and wine these are all very challenging and one mistake can cost you a wipe and reload and with that said once again i invite you to take a look down below in the video description here on top of the video um in the form of video cards and pretty much all over my channel you should be able to find so many ah. witcher 3 videos and such a rich witcher 3 content that i would really hope that you should be able to find yourself something to entertain you I do have another build video actually, this is the second one that I'm ever creating, I do have another one uh, which was made more than a year ago and it's my favorite non-OP build, which means uh, that build would allow me to stay alive, protect myself and dance with the enemies. It's not an alchemy build so I'm not one-shotting things left and right. Thank you guys for enjoying uh, the build or guide or tutorial or whatever you want to take this as. Now sit back, take a look at the couple of short clips with uh, combat gameplay and jump to the walkthroughs that I have for you. See you next time. Bye bye. What? That's not really too important. Definitely tough enough. You complete your tasks. Live happily ever after. You're the next. Okay. There's life in the city. Who's next? You. Okay. Sky. 
Last one. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Click the like button and help me out. Visit my website vok.com for daily videos and news. To help me improve and expand, consider becoming my patron with a small monthly pledge. And stay in touch by following me on Facebook and Twitter.